for those of you uh, who are here for the first time, we uh, I do some writing before the class to get the thoughts going and the contact. And our class is entitled Thinking Tonight. And we talk a great deal about that in our basic classes, but it seems the teachers want to talk about it tonight. Your repeated thoughts, your habit patterns of thinking, mold and shape your life as it was, as it is, and as it will be. Many on your plane think without thinking, or should we say without being aware of what they are thinking. It is very important to realize that your feelings, moods, attitudes, desires are thoughts also. My dear ones, you can help yourself, the planet, and all of life as you become aware of the pattern, excuse me, of the pollution thought, you are polluting into the ethers. The ethers around your planet are much more polluted than, you, than the physical. This has been so for a very long time as your concept of time. It may be true that everyone on your planet is adding to the thought pollution around your planet every day with the exception of a few masters who reside with you in the physical to help keep the balance from going too far in the negative swing. Had you had a day when your thoughts were completely positive and loving, your children are have a better score in this than their parents until they become conditioned in the in the uh, dominant thoughts of your plane. This has a, let's go and turn it away. Well, we'll have a quiet time before we start. <clears throat> As we close our eyes and relax our bodies, Let's bring our full attention to this moment and this place in consciousness. Let us think of this circle as a circle of light, a circle of love, and a circle of healing. Let us lift our thoughts upward in vibration to the realms of divine love and light. And as we lift our thoughts up, the teachers and those beings of light are reaching down to meet us. Feel their presence. Know that there are many shining beings here with us tonight. And there are many from the other dimensions who have come to learn as you have. Thank you, Father. Good evening, my dear ones. This is Gadan coming to you from these realms of love and light. It is a special privilege to be with you in this way, and we welcome the new ones who have come to our circle. We welcome everyone who comes in this drop-in class and is fed by the truth. When your soul becomes hungry, it needs to be fed. Sometimes you can sit down and meditate and go within and feel the presence of God and his helpers. Other times you can pick up a book that is of the truth and read a little while. But it is very good to come to a place like this where others are in the same accord. It is good 
to feed your soul. So many on this planet do not even know that they have a soul. And many who do know do not take the time to feed your soul. There are many things that feed the soul. Beautiful music, loving embrace, gathering together as we are here now, and studying your lessons when you are at home. I would suggest that each day you set aside some time that you go alone and have a certain place in your home where you can be alone. And if you can make it close to the same time every day, it would be good. There are many who work, who get up much earlier than usual to have their quiet times and have their communion with God before they start their day. And this makes a big difference in your ability to have a good day, to have a beautiful day, and to have love in your heart for yourself and for all mankind. Our subject matter is nothing new to most of you who have taken the classes here. But I tell you, my dear ones, you need to be reminded of it more often. You need to be reminded where your mind is. And think of the word reminded. Re means again, does it not? So as you think, so you are. And realize that feelings, moods, attitudes, desires, all of this comes under the heading of thought. You do not have to think in language if you just feel down, you see you are putting out negative vibrations. And when you're in a bad mood or someone has, you have allowed someone to disturb your peace, you are then sending out these negative vibrations into this ether. And many of you do not know that your planet is surrounded by a dark cloud of negative thoughts. Now, this is not very positive to say, not very loving, but it is important that you realize the truth and that you understand so that you can make a greater effort to add to the light and the love and dispel some of this dark cloud around your planet. Let me say this to you. This center is kept filled with God's love and light and healing power. And there is a special channel, a, a column, I should say, of light and love that connects your physical with the planes that we speak from. And it is kept alive both by you in the physical and by us on this side. There are many here tonight, many, many more than in the physical. And if you could see and understand how hungry they are for the truth, just as you are, and maybe even more, because they did not have a chance to have a, an experience like this while they were in the physical body. So they gather more and more each week. And those that come tell others about your classes and your meetings. There are small groups like this all over the world. And it is these small groups, my dear ones, that helps keep the, ba help keep the balance of this planet. Now, of course, you have new experiences coming on your planet now that you did not expect. Be not concerned, overly concerned about this, but do give love, God's love, 
into the ethers to help keep the balance and to help it from being a much more explosive thing than it might be. For those who are new, there's an article on sending God's love on the table by the door. Take one home and read it and practice it. It will help you as much as it helps those that you send love to because it has to go through you to go out. And as it goes through you, it helps you, my dear Ron. There is much, much that you can do, even though you are not in a position as Donald is. Uh, every moment that you have a little time, you can send God's love. You can send it unlabeled. You can send it to your friend, to your family. You can fill your home with overflowing with God's love. You can fill your offices wherever you work. And you can send love to everyone in the whole universe, my dear one, and to the whole universe, where God's love is unlimited in power and wisdom. God's love is the substance of all of life, for all of life is created out of God's love. It is through God's love that he brought this universe into being and sustains and maintains it. And my dear ones, this has been said before, but it is important that you remember that God's love for you is so great that the universe cannot contain it and it is constantly expanding and becoming larger. Remember this when you are tempted to have a down day or you're tempted to think negative thoughts about uh, whatever happened. What others do, my dear ones, has nothing to do with you, not even your family and your close friends. What they do is their business. How you react to it is your business. And how you think about it is how you react to it. Sometimes someone close to you is having problems. That is why we're here on this plane, is to have problems. This may sound strange to you, but you see, we call it opportunities. You come here to work out your misunderstandings about life. You come in the physical body where you have to support this body and take much of your time and energy to house it, to clothe it, to have transportation, feed it, and many other things. And through these experiences that you have, you have the opportunity to go forward or to go backward. It is up to you. No one else has anything to do with it but you. You may think that if he hadn't have done this or she hadn't have done that, I wouldn't have been upset. But you see, my dear ones, you cannot change other people. And there's very little that you can do about the weather or the world conditions. And I take that back. There is much that you can do about the world condition to sending God's love. There are so few who know about this that we urge you to every second that you have, let God's love flow through you. Send it unlabeled most of the time because God's love is all wise and all powerful. It knows what to do. And there are many, many helpers that God has to take this love where you send it. And when you send it unlabeled, then it is guided by God's hand. I would have you to know this and to remind you who do know it to continue to have a pattern of sending God's love. Have 
maybe certain times of the day that you send love out. When you think of your crisis that is going on in your world, you realize that it is much more important at this time to send extra love to the world, to the world leaders, and to all the problem spots in the world, and to all those involved in it. My dear ones, God's love is a substance, just as much as your body is a substance, just as much as this microphone is a substance. It is the most powerful force in the whole universe. It is the whole universe because everything is made from God's love. Now, let's get to the subject matter. How does God's love work and how do you fit in with how it works? On the physical plane, my dear one, it comes down to thoughts. Life force works through the mind with thoughts to reach the physical. Now, for those who are not acquainted with the lessons here, everything comes from above down or from within out, meaning the same thing. Everything comes from the highest vibration down to the lowest. And nothing is created, originated, on the physical plane only. It has to start on the other dimension, the higher dimension. The inspiration that you get to invent something, to write a story, to write a song, comes from the higher dimension. And you are these higher dimensions as well as you are the physical even though you may not know this. And those of you who are becoming more aware that you are these higher dimensions are bringing forth beautiful things into the physical. It is a wonderful experience to let creation flow through you, to let the power of God's love and light and understanding flow through you to create something new, to bring forth clean energy, for example. This is one of the things that is much needed and will soon come to your planet when you can stop thinking about war. I want to say this one thing, and do not be offended by it, but when you prepare for war, you are going to have war. And when all the countries learn to stop preparing for war and building war machines and war material, you had a beginning on this and whether you think so or not, it is good that this new crisis has come up. It is like a boil, my dear ones, on your body. It has to come up to a head and birth, and then it starts to heal. And when you have some poisonous spots on your planet and individuals who are producing poison, this has to come up to a head. My dear one, your world is becoming smaller and smaller, as you know, and it soon will be one world without any country. And what is happening now is just the outworking of this and bringing it about. There may be other things, other places that have to go through this experience before it can come to the one world with a very small government, very small. 
You see, my dear ones, when people learn to love themselves and to love each other, they do not need to be policed. They do not need hospitals because there will be no disease. Your new age that you're moving into, that you're into now, that is moving rapidly, is bringing this about. Many, many new wonderful things await you in your near future. And if you will look back just a few years ago, things have accelerated on your planet. Many, many things have happened to bring your planet up into a higher consciousness. Now remember that the planet itself is an entity, just as you are an entity. It is a live being, and it has mothered you, it has fed you, it has clothed you, and given you everything in the physical that you have. Everything that you have in the physical has come from this planet. When you stop to think about it, learn to love the planet as you love yourself and as you love your neighbor. Learn to send love to your planet and learn to send love to those thoughts that get away from you that are less than loving. Send love, God's love immediately and cast them out. You have a powerful tool here to do this, a very powerful tool. Remember to use it. Remember, my dear ones, to use it. This is why Donald starts his classes with the subconscious mind and cleaning out the pattern. For it is the habit patterns of thinking that make your life what it is. And when you have conscious control over your patterns of thinking, both on a conscious level and a subconscious level, then you are the master of yourself. And this is what you are working toward, to be the master of yourself. And when you master your thinking, when you master yourself, your spirit, your mind, and your body, you have complete control over this. As the master did, the master teacher set an example for you to go by. Then can you master the whole universe? And this may not have come out just right. Then you have the whole universe as your playground, you might say. And you can do whatever you want to do and be whatever you want to be. And as you learn more of the real truth, you realize that to be loving is the most beautiful thing that you have in life. To be loving to yourself first. Learn to love yourself. Eliminate those guilt and self-condemnation thoughts. Let them go over the wayside. They're in the past. They're dead. The past is dead except as you give it life through your thoughts. Through your thoughts. Now, the memory bank is in the soul and the subconscious, and everything that you've ever done is in those memory banks. And if they are active and are not subdued, those negative ones, those destructive ones, they are controlling your life, maybe from many lifetimes in the past. But just think of this life, how many years that you have been conditioned, maybe in a negative, destructive way. And maybe you don't even consider it negative some of the thinking that you do. But my dear, if it is less than loving, and I'm talking about God's love, divine love, if it is less than loving, then it is destructive. You are a beautiful circle of light tonight, 
And there's much power here, power of God's love, power and beauty of God's glory. His presence is with us tonight in great abundance. And let us stop at this time for a short time and give you opportunities to ask questions. Give consideration to what you would like to ask. When you inject into this circle of light a question or a, a comment, you are adding your life force much more. And when several of you start asking questions, then the light becomes brighter. And the ones who are here from the invisible side, as you think of it, they learn a great deal from your question. They understand because they probably had some of the same questions that were not answered while they were in the physical body. Feel free to make comment and to ask questions so that we are joined together in this lesson tonight. I would like to thank you for the channeling. I have been working on in little different channelings this week. And as I work, I would like to take the card in my left hand and run as a word in my right hand. Those words began to be real. They have terrific power the way you said them. At first, I thought I should uh, not try to retain what you're saying, or I thought I should just make a straight southern statement. But I found that as, as you repeat over and over again, or stop and readjust the thing, it gives me time to the idea to step, to sink in. And it's just like that idea is put on a, on a pedestal and it, it drives its meaning home. Uh, I, I wish that we could get there, the, the beginning of Don's, uh, Don's talk and its introduction. I wish you could get more. You agree more. I wish that in the end, we could get in the words that Don uses when we stand up and make the circle and he sends out with us to the whole wide world. That, to me, is a very important part of each channeling. And I, I, I listen, I bought these tape, and I listen to them at night by my spell. But it they don't get in until, until I begin to write them down. They are absolutely magnificent. And I would don't like any part of it, law. Not one word. I like it to be to be as you'd say it. You don't have the stupid polish that we do, but you repeat it where it's necessary. And I think that we could put a couple dots in between the ideas and put it just like you say it, because I don't like to leave through the flavor of your teaching. I think those, this channeling is absolutely magnificent. We don't be willing to appreciate it until we get further and further in it. I have recorded three of these tallings in one day, and that means that I was in it almost all the time. But the glory of it, the beauty of it, is unbelievable. You don't get it by just the whistle. One, but right. You don't get it. It just, it's just water, like water off a duck back. It runs away. I'd like, to see the machine that Donald has that would work so that we could get her baby visited questions each one did and, and clearly and slowly and distinctly because they're important. They're as important as the answer you give that because you don't know what we mean until we ask our question. And if I miss the question, uh, and I try to uh, fumble along and, and make up what, what I miss. It, it is no good. It, I mean, it takes away the magnificence of it. It takes away the essence 
of the person who asks that question. I think you've got to get the flavor of every living soul, even the little, even the little armworm, even the little bug that sits on the book page and stampers a card. I wonder where his links are. There's nothing any bigger than period. That to me is as much a miracle as a human body. And I wish you'd show us how some way of which we could get with the mechanical error. Who would have told us that Don needs to do the recording of all the questions and answers so that it, it comes up to the to the powerful beauty that it's meant to be. This this channeling should not be lost in any way, shape, or form. Every bit of it is important, and it's magnificent. I think it's one of the most wonderful things I've heard. Yes. Before. You have gained greatly from this, my dear one. And by, by writing them down and listening to them, when you write something down, you have to listen. You have to hear it. Your mind does not wonder because you can't write a word and then think something else. And you have gained greatly by doing that. I can say it in my words. If I try to take the question of these people have and put them in my words, they fall flat. They're, they're the same words, but for her, they ruins the essence of it. They lose the brilliance of it. And that's what I'd like. I'd be willing to contribute part with some little machinery. I wish we did get it. Uh, without we show her. This that you have that was donated to you by Don Owens is good. It is uh, important that Maybe we have a little, when we ask questions, to speak up louder uh, so that it gets on the tape. Like you're in the distance talking to somebody in the distance. Yeah. And, uh, and slower, and slower, because for most people, when they ask a the question, they're really nervous. They want to say it's fast to get it out. And it all runs together, and it doesn't stand out clearly, you know. Well, the question is important. You are important. Every one of you has this interesting question to answer, and every one of you should be responsible to bring something, some contribution to this program. Something you thought about, very interesting you thought about during the week. There's some question. You know that if you think it's a little stupid, answer it, because it begins in the teacher that said, to give us good, solid material to give them to your body. Yes, this is very true, my dear Annabelle. And it is good that you have gotten this much from it. You see, the more you give, the more you receive. And you've heard the power of this testimony of this dear one who has transcribed these tapes on the paper, and she has received greatly from it. I like to check very carefully the question, because I'm, I need some of it, and I've tried to build in, and it's, well, it's my words, if it realizes, if it realizes the essence of the person who stands yet, that flavor of the teaching, the flavor of the person who asks this question, is tremendously important. No one can regret it, no matter how smart they are. Yes, there will come a day when we will not be uh, limited by the language and speaking, and it will be soon, much sooner than some of you think. And we will use thought transparency. And in this way, you see, you can reach someone on the other side of the universe because there is no such thing as time or space. There is no such thing as duality. And when you realize that that's what holds you to these lower dimensions is the concept of duality, then you will give it up. But your language, duality is intertwined in your language so much that we could not communicate with you without using it. 
because you would not understand. There would be too many holes in the communication. But there will come a day, and it will be soon. Each generation that comes in to your planet, that incarnates on this planet, they are higher than a generation before. Now, at this time, there are the lower entities, too. But soon, the vibrations will be so high that they cannot stand these higher vibrations, and they will not be able to incarnate on this planet. They will have to go to another planet that has been similar to this one in the past. You are beautiful ones who have a great opportunity to help yourself and the whole planet and everyone on it. There are so many who know not the real truth, and you who do know some of the truth still have a ways to go. And when you take the time to listen to yourself, to listen to that inner voice that speaks to you from your higher self and from the God within you, then do you learn. You truly learn. But when you are running to and fro and trying to keep up with the pace of this physical world, you do not have time, as you say, and you do not have the energy. Eliminate some of these things that are not important. Eliminate them from your life, my dear one. We assess your values. Ask yourself what is truly valuable in the sense of eternity. In the sense of eternity. Not physical fact. Not physical wealth. Those, my dear ones, who are uh, abundantly wealthy, millionaires and billionaires, as you call them, when they get to this side, some of them live in groveling hut because they have not any spiritual understanding. You see, what you are doing now at this time, daily, is building your many mansions on these dimensions. As your master teacher said, in my father's house are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place for you. Now let's bring this down to what we can understand in truth in in your language. You live in a house, and in your dreams, in symbolic dreams, your house is your consciousness most of the time. So, whatever level of consciousness that you have when you graduate from this plane, go through the experience we call death, and come to this side of the veil, this is the level the many dimensions, the many mansions that are here that you gravitate to like water seeks its own level. And your consciousness automatically places you where you are at all times. And this is why it is true that everyone is in their right place at all times because you are in the place where your consciousness, your level of consciousness, is comfortable, can survive, can feel at ease. If several people were to come in here, in this room now, and maybe there were five empty chairs, their subconscious would immediately reach out and and uh, feel the vibrations and they would go to the place where they feel the most comfortable, where their vibration is close to the ones they set close to. And when a family moves to a new town, the same thing happens. They look the town over, and they go 
to where they are comfortable, to where they feel at ease, because this is their level of consciousness. And your level of consciousness, my dear ones, has a great deal to do with your thinking. Your thinking is a builder of your consciousness on this plane. On other higher planes, there is, there are many other thoughts, many other uh, things um, besides thought that build your consciousness that you have dominion over. And I cannot bring them down into your language at this time. But you will reach these. Everyone will reach heaven as you think of it. Everyone will overcome this world, this, these lower vibrations, these lower dimensions. Everyone. God has given you the freedom to take as long as you want. But everyone will reach it. So why not you pass someone by who is having problem, who is not enlightened, remember, send them God's law and release them to God. Think no more about them. Do not consider what level they are on or how bad off they are. Realize that everyone is in God's hands at all times because there is no other place except God. There is no place in the whole universe that God is not. And then there's a right fear, but we are to reduce not it's not upstead in some way. Yeah. Heaven is within you. God is within you. You live in your consciousness. And as you realize this and make it real to you, then you know where to go to change your life and to bring about new things in your life to bring about new experiences, beautiful experiences, and maybe sometimes challenging experiences. We have come to this lower dimensions to have something to push again, because on the higher dimensions, everything is too easy, and the growth is slower. And so you come into these lower dimensions to have greater opportunity. Sometimes you do not take the opportunity and you go back home with a minus instead of a plus and you are disappointed. But you have all eternity, my dear ones, that has no ending. And God loves you just as much as he did when he brought you into being and probably a lot more. Never, never let yourself think that God condemns you or judges you in any way. He only loves you. And through this love of God, you can climb the ladder to a higher consciousness, to understanding what God's love is all about, and to understand that God is within you and that you can reach him at any time. This is the message for you. And through thinking, the thoughts that inspire you, that lift you up, that gives you a feeling of oneness with life, and realizing that you're one with family of life. Everyone in the whole universe is your brother and sister. No one is excluded. This is like Shakespeare said, a play on a stage, and each one of you are playing a different part. And before you have played many other parts, and maybe in the future you will play other parts. You are playing the part that you are playing now to learn what you need to learn, to enhance your consciousness, to grow spiritually. Are there other questions that we... We have other questions. Yeah. How is about the children? Is the children love a truth? Would they be there? 
more prepared for this life, or I would say not have the uh, negative person that we have. Uh, we have to worry to be in my two. Who are we talking about? We missed the word here. The children. We are all children of God, but I know, understand what you mean. When they graduate from this plane as children, they have, uh, we make a contract before we are born. And sometimes it is just for a few years and we uh, get what we need at that particular time. Or we come in to help the parent to learn and to grow. The children, as you see them in their innocence and their beauty, be like the children, my dear one, not like the spoiled ones that uh, in your, some of your uh, modern day thing have uh, given the children the wrong ideas. The communication is so rapid now through your television and many other things that the children grow very fast in learning whatever is presented to them. And much of it is destructive. Much of it on your television is destructive. And you need to edit what your children uh, what? Now, I think your question is, where do the children grow when they graduate from this plane? Is that right? Yeah, no, my question is, uh, how was the this you we could help them to learn the, the truth before the Yes, before they're conditioned in a negative way. Yes, by example, over and over, you have been told this. They do not hear your words nearly as much as they do your example. They follow your example. They do as they see you do. And so, being a parent is one of the most difficult jobs on this planet being a parent that helps the child to find their way into the world with understanding of who they truly are. And it is good that you teach your children early about God and about life because they have a greater capacity to understand than you think. They have just come from these dimensions and they sometimes remember some of it and they have a much greater capacity to understand than most adults. And children have that magic cut, that touch of magic that comes with them and you could call it innocence. They have come well, their slate is not really clean because of their past lives. But for this incarnation, in a sense, it is clean. And they start off in the way they bring many things with them from other incarnations. But if they have parents who teach them, and you can teach your babies even with thoughts, thoughts uh, go directly to their mark. And there's an empathical cord, especially with the mother to the children, a psychical, psychic emblem cord. And it is there until the child becomes of age, and even after that sometimes. And sometimes it is destructive, and sometimes it is not. But if you remember that every thought, feeling, mood, attitude, goes right through this emblem to the child, to the baby, and is built into their consciousness. So 
is a great responsibility to be a parent. And some of you can look back and see that they would have done different if they had known the truth when their children had come. Does this help your understanding? Yes. Thank you. Are there other questions this evening? Yes, I have a question in regard to uh, thinking, or not so much thinking, but uh, in regard to um, praise is the issue that's going on in Iraq uh, and Kuwait right now. Um, I talked to other people who uh, I would just say uh, may be less enlightened to the truth than I am at present. Um, and sometimes I have a hard time trying to pick the right words uh, in conversation to say, uh, not that I necessarily feel I need to comfort them in any ways, but from where I'm coming from, I can see the truth in a different way than they do. And sometimes I feel compelled to say certain things and get caught up between my little self and big self in reference to the right thing to say. And I was wondering if you could just said some enlightenment on what would be a good way for me to deal with these kind of situations without, you know, bombarding them with my ideas too much. To those who are unenlightened, as to the eternal truths, uh, it might be better just to send them love because your words can be very confusing. And you can take one word and this whole circle of light, each one of you will have a different concept of what that word really means. And it is true with the masses. They have their own idea of what a word means. And everyone is different. And uh, some of them who have families there are upset and distraught. Some God's love to them also realize that these events that are happening on your planet are shaping and molding the future as it will be in, in your thinking of time. The boil has to come up and burst and be cleansed. And this is what is happening. And on your plane, all the only way that you know to do this is by having wars because you have had wars on your planet since it was formed as people have come to this planet. And this is ingrained much, much in the world consciousness in the race thought, some people say. And so it is difficult to communicate with each other it is difficult, much more difficult to communicate with those who have no understanding of the spiritual truths. And so be gentle with them and to send them God's love. It, you, we become over enthused at times and talk too much. And it might be more helpful to say little but send a lot of love. Does this help your understanding? Yes, very much. Well, and then I had a while this question in reference to the subject side about thinking. I'm working at really diligently working with reprogramming a lot of my negative thinking, past negative thinking and getting it out. And I seem to do well in the morning, uh, but I have a little bit more of a battle in the afternoon. Uh, I feel like I am striving a little more instead of uh, I mean, straining a little more in the afternoon instead of striving, as has been suggested, to move into this uh, new thinking of abundance that I'm working with. Um, as there, yes, it when you awaken, you see you come from these dimensions that I'm speaking from, because when you go to sleep at night, you leave your body, and you are manifesting on the dimension that you're vibrating at, and. Uh, if you have slept well, as you say, then you have uh, had a good night on these dimensions. And you do not bring much of the memory back, but you bring the ceiling back with you, and you feel renewed in spirit. 
if you if you haven't had a good night's sleep as you think of it. And as the day wears on, then the world comes in, you hear the news and the negativity that goes on. And so it is good to stop often through the day and sit down, close your eyes, relax your body, and go within and be renewed. I think it was Paul who said, be renewed by the renewing of your mind. And it is like asking God to cleanse you of all past negation and then doing maybe the breathing exercise that you know about to your hands to wash your aura, to cleanse it. And do this more often. There are times when you can that you don't think about it. And then another way is sending God's love. As it goes through you, it helps you as much as it helps the, the situation or individual you send it to. But do not allow yourself to become overtired, your physical self. Now, what makes you tired so much of the time is boredom, doing the same thing over and over. And so break up your day by coming to us on these dimensions and asking to be renewed and revitalized and relax your body and your mind so that it can get through. And if you do this, five, six, seven, or more times every day, then you, you will be renewed. And there are times, my dear ones, when you think you can't stop doing what you're doing, and you can even do it then with practice. You can do it while you're working, while you're doing things. You can have your thoughts with a and make that contact. Think of a um, column of light going from your head up to the higher dimensions, and that light, come, that light and love coming back down, filling your whole being. You see, it comes back to thoughts. Your thoughts determine what your life is like, and with your thought, you can be destructive, or you can renew yourself and have all the energy and vitality that you need. Does this help your understanding? Yes, very much. Thank you. Are there other questions this evening? Yes, I have a question related to what we're talking about thought. I've heard that um, it takes 21 days uh, to get something to your change your habit of spending a um and light loss on water. That is a, a, a good thought uh, that some teacher has put out, but <clears throat> it is the truth that everyone is a different individual. And it has been said by one of the teachers that if you could have one day, just one day, where you had no negative thought, and all of your thoughts, and that includes your feelings, moods, attitude, desire, were loving, you would be far on your way to being free from these negative planes. Your seven-day mental diet is a very good thing to follow. It is helps you to understand and to be aware of what you are doing. Most on your di dimension are thinking negative, positive thoughts and are not even aware of it. Does this help your understanding? Yeah. yeah. Are there other thoughts? This has been a beautiful evening to spend with you, and it is our joy to come and be with you in this way. 
it is a beautiful experience for you if you can understand and you are fed by coming to this circle of life. Come often to something like this where others are gathered together in one accord and you will be fed. Your soul cries out for that spiritual food of truth, the eternal truth. God bless you, my dear one, and good evening.